You're watching LMCC. Hi, I'm Kelly Murphy Rangate, Fire Marshal and Public Educator for the Excelsior Fire District and welcome to First Responder TV, your local public safety source, featuring training exercises, safety tips and much more. Here's what's coming up on First Responder TV. I'll talk with Lisa George from Sugar XR about the exciting new Smart Kids Fire Safety AR experience. We will show you highlights from the Excelsior Fire District's Fire Prevention Open House and Safety Fair. Scam Alert will give you an update on scams that have been targeting citizens in the lake area. From the Vault, we'll revisit informative First Responder TV segments from the past. Joining me now is Lisa George from the company Sugar XR. This is the company that created the Smart Kids Fire Safety AR experience. Thanks for joining us, Lisa. Thanks for having me, Kelly. So can you tell us how you created Sugar XR? what the company does, and about the company itself. SugarXR is an engagement platform. It's like Pokemon Go for business, or Pokemon Go for community. It's a way to use augmented reality to engage kids in experiences that they can learn, shop, buy, have fun. About the company itself, what else does the company do? We have a variety of augmented reality experiences. We have them for small businesses to drive traffic, sales, and social engagement, and for communities to have them drive traffic or nonprofits. And like the community and fire service, we can engage kids in things that are important to them, in this case, fire safety. Tell me how your partnership with the um, Minnesota Fire Service started. It's an interesting story because I was at the Today Show of all places and I was standing next to a New York firefighter. How we launched is a Halloween experience. I told him about our Halloween experience and he said fire departments in New York have some budget issues and they wanted to be able to have experiences for the community members that were low cost. And I said, how about if I donate our Halloween experience? And it was great. They were just outside Syracuse and a number of fire departments wanted to use it. So I contacted you yes. and said, would Excelsior and the greater region be interested in using it as well for free? We can't afford to spend $1,500 out of our fire prevention budget for candy to hand out at all these events. So you gave something that enhanced a lot of fire departments connection with their communities. So it was fantastic. So that said, can you give our viewers a little demonstration about how it works? Sure. So we create QR codes. It's called WebGL, and it makes characters or experiences, I'll let you hold that, okay. instantly come to life. So you use it with your phone, but I'm doing it with the iPad so that the viewers can see it a little bit better. And what happens is it's an instantaneous experience that brings Halloween to life with your character. So I'll take this and there is Tiny. So let's get Kelly in. So this experience, you can take a picture and so then you can share it and post it. And what's great for fire departments is they could use it to do trunk or treats. They can give the QR codes out to kids instead of candy and it gives them some fun experience around Halloween. But with the fire safety group, we also created a series of tips and tricks to make Halloween safe. So we have trick or treating tips, we have pumpkin carving, all of that that we created with the Excelsior Fire District um, and, are, and distributed statewide. And then it's a part of our national product too. So not only do kids get to have fun, but they get to learn how to have fun being safe. And the Halloween experience is actually what launched the Smart Kids Fire Safety AR experience. It really is. So after the success of Halloween free to the different fire departments, you asked me to come to the Minnesota State Fire Chiefs Association Public Education Committee meeting. And while I was there, I met the most incredible group of individuals who truly cared about public safety and our local communities. And so it was just a joy to be a part of. And you challenged me to say, how could we create experiences that could truly get kids engaged in fire safety and prevention? 
Together, we created a series of five augmented reality experiences and then guides that go with each experience that tell you kind of what to learn and how. So it's the same kind of thing. We used it across the state during October's National Fire Prevention Month, and then it can be used year round in schools, in events, at open houses, and a variety of things. But how the experience works is exactly the same way, and anyone can do it. So you come over, and all you have to do is scan the QR code that's distributed by local fire departments. And the same thing happens. We have a variety of experiences. It's super simple. And you can choose all the different experiences. And so, for instance, you can high five Spot, which is the local hero dog. And what's great about Spot is if kids are a little nervous about some of the fire experiences because there's interactive smoke and some of the other pieces, this allows kids to feel really comfortable. You can see spots here and you can high five him. We'll move Kelly in. There's Kelly, and you can make it bigger, smaller, <laughs> and, then, and you can capture it the same way. And what's amazing, though, about Spot is kids as little as preschool can start to get engaged and feel comfortable. And what we saw at the Excelsior Open House was that the younger kids who didn't want to experience the smoke experience were willing to do the dog and high-five the dog, and once they were comfortable with that, would be willing to try some of the other experiences. Can you share some of the information you get when people use the QR code? Sure. We have very top line information and the information is about how many uses and how long and I think the interesting thing is we launched in about between 30 and 60 communities on night to night and national night out in the state of Minnesota used it and we had over 5,000 uses in two hours and that's a lot of people to impact at no cost all of it is completely free but what I think is most interesting is the usage then because we handed out QR codes codes and other pieces that they could take home, people used and practiced at home, especially the crawl low under smoke, is one that was really highly used. What its goal is, is to get in kind of kids muscle memory, that if they see or feel smoke, get down and get out, because that's how kids are gonna get safe. As the kids that experienced it went through it, smiling, having fun, being comfortable in the experience, but now I think it's in the, their brain. And if they practice at home and practice actually getting out of the house, I think we'll save lives. And I think for the fire departments that are watching, um, you know, I know the Excelsior Fire District teaches kids that the hot black icky smoke is up here and the cool clean air we're breathing right now is down here. This experience really allowed kids to see that delineation. Like the smoke is up here and there's plenty of room for me to crawl down here. So it was, it was just a great thing to see actually being used and you're right. It's taking fire prevention to a whole nother level. Watching the kids watch each other, which was also really important. We had a whole crowd of kids watching the other kids and they'd say things like, get lower, get lower, now crawl forward, you know? And it was like they were coaching and it was an experience the whole community was engaged in. And the other couple experiences that I think are super cool is we have a safety globe. So the safety globe experience is right here. The safety globe puts a globe, and I'll show you in a second, around anything that is a heat source, is how I would describe it as a lay person. But what's really cool is this guide above it tells you why it's important and it shows you it in use around a campfire, a turkey smoker. And so what you would do is you would have this safety globe your stove would be right in the middle. It would show you then what should not be around it. And I can't tell you how many times I've now, since having this globe, moved utensils, taken pans off the stove, um, made sure my grandkids aren't as close. The, the globe taught me fire safety about my own home that I never thought about before. And I think that's the power of augmented reality where you can take something and put it right into your house and have it be a live interaction. Um, it's really powerful. One thing we haven't talked about, how you've provided it free to Minnesota fire departments. Yes. So let's talk about how this is, um, how Smart Kids Fire Safety AR Experience is funded. Right, so right now it is our 
kind of pro bono part of our business. We have a variety of products that we sell to consumers. So we create Halloween AR is a product that we're actually selling to consumers. So I built this um, in the hopes that then we will look for sponsors and grant money to expand it beyond the state of Minnesota. So right now we've donated it statewide and it's something we'd like to continue to donate um, and but to grow national we need to look for sponsors or some sort of funding source to just pay for the implementation of that. I would ask our viewers if you're watching this today and you know a firefighter in a fire department mention this to them because there's 700 and 65 give or take a few in Minnesota and we are just trying to reach them all because this can either enhance a fire department's current fire prevention program or if they don't have one this is the jump start to it and I do know at our open house which this is a crazy number 3,000 people in two and a half hours went through the crawl low so this is a great product and if you are a consumer where would somebody go to find out more information? You can visit our website, which is www.sugarxr.com slash smartkids. If you're a firefighter, there's a link on the same page to get to the firefighter page. And there we have all sorts of QR codes in all different sizes, social media posts. So once you start using it, you can share and um, a variety of videos of it in use so you can see what the experience is. For rural departments, what's great about this is this is dependent on your citizens' technology, not the fire department's technology. So that's one of the things that was phenomenal about this when we first started this partnership is fire departments don't have to have Wi-Fi and all that stuff to get this up and going. It's the person's phone. It takes a village and the Minnesota State Fire Chiefs Association has been critical to um, this reaching the threshold it has. They were supportive, they've been distributing information, they um, were willing to put a portion of funds towards helping us launch as well. So I'm greatly appreciative of that. And then individual firefighters who just thought it's really cool. You know, I think about you who said yes and that's the reason it happened. Anna, who is a a, um, firefighter in Gibbon, Minnesota, helped me create a grain bin safety tips because that is important in her area of the state. So the idea that smart kids, fire safety as a tool can be something for everyone, for your department, whether you are full-time staff, whether you are volunteer fire department, we have something for everything and it's completely free and as you mentioned, dependent on the citizen's technology. So it's simple, like it is just simple, simple, simple. Post a QR code, people can experience it. The other thing is this is going to grow. This is going to grow. There's so it, much for it to grow. And mm -hmm. I think the other part that to me is really compelling, we are at in a world of really short attention spans. And what I will tell you is people are using Smart Kids Fire Safety Tool um, for two to five minutes each use when they're at home. So what that tells you is the engagement is just through the roof as far as kids thinking it is fun and compelling or families thinking it's of real value and worth their time. And the other part that it does is if they get it from your department and then share on social media, they're not only showing their kids crawling underneath smoke, but they're showing you you should try it too. And they become ambassadors for the fire safety as well just by participating and sharing. And so I think the opportunity to create a legion of fire safety ambassadors by using this um, technology-driven, exciting experience is really a cool opportunity for us all. Now we've talked about a lot today. Is there anything else you would like to add that we haven't covered? We're in a really crazy time. October was so busy with all the open houses and all the events for the fire safety tool that it's just been um, a real gift. I will say that I have never had clients um, like uh, the fire district or like the firefighters, and there is no one that I feel more passionate about creating a tool for. These are people that when there's a fire, literally run towards it instead of away. And as you know, I created this after we had a medical um, issue in my own home and the Excelsior Fire District saved my husband's life. And I knew I wanted to be able to give something back. And so this is why I do and created this. My husband is actually the developer. So he is the person who helped me build the um, infrastructure that makes the whole thing run. My daughter, 
helps with social media. My son was here for the open house. It is a family affair. And then we have a paid team as well, but um, it's really a deep connection to my heart creating this. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're really busy because it's right before Halloween. Woo, let's get spooky. A, yep, and you're doing a lot of stuff to get that you know, augmented reality experience out there and available to everyone. So thank you very much, Lisa. My pleasure. Hear that? That's the sound of your life. Perfectly imperfect. But every time you drive after drinking, the music gets drowned out. Your life sounds pretty great. Don't let a buzz ruin it. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. Don't drive buzzed. On Safety Source, the Excelsior Fire District's annual Fire Prevention Open House and Safety Fair is a fun-filled event packed with fire and life safety exhibits, activities, and demonstrations. So many people show up for this. It's just, there's so many different vendors that show up. And I'll tell you, our fire district is so awesome about the people that support us and donate. So have that opportunity to come in see the vendors, see the different displays, educate the public. It's about education, it's about the community coming together and people look forward to this every year. At this point in time, they're ready to make entry. Payne will come through, he's gonna do an initial flow, he's gonna flow water. We're out here to support our local fire department. Um, my great grandfather was a fire chief of his community fire department and so it's extra special, we think it's really important, and we just appreciate our firefighters and our first responders so much. Oh, we got the SWAT, the big SWAT truck, the MRAP. We got fire truck rides, I've got a place we can spray um, the fire hose. Putting on your gear, that's uh, something that kids usually get pretty excited about to see how that's done. And then I've never seen, and I don't think it's been demonstrated, actually extricating a victim through a window. Well, I just learned that most of them are volunteers and that all, they all have day jobs during the day and then they also have to come here and learn everything about their job and volunteering here. A lot of families, a lot of kids have been giving out a lot of uh, small rings for Halloween, Halloween safety tips on how to stay safe when they're trick-or-treating. We've also been talking about uh, our Citizens Academy that's coming up next week. we got seven spots open. Looking for some adults in the area to join our academy. You are safe! Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yes! Awesome. What our troop is doing at our table is we have these little forms that people can fill out on the back side. There is a grid that they can make their housing plans on or like the floor plans of their house. So that way they can follow the path that they make there to figure out what a safe escaper would be from their house in the event of a fire. You gotta crawl underneath the smoke. One, two, three. It has the two rooms that we build with a door in between. We put a child's room on the left and a living space on the right, and we ignite the furniture on the right-hand side to illustrate that a door being closed can prevent smoke and, more importantly, fire. So one side of the space actually becomes unsurvivable, if you will, but the, do the, the uh, room that is protected by the closed door, you can survive in there until a firefighter can, can help you get out. We're a face, we're not just a badge, we're having fun. They know they can call us if there's a need for it, 911. We're gonna show up, we're people. It's all about building those relationships. It is about 65 pounds of gear that you're wearing. This is a, a second job on top of our full-time job and it requires a huge time commitment, a lot of training, we have to do shifts, and to just get the simple thank yous just means a tremendous amount for all of us. And then the donations we get means a tremendous amount as well. Eyes forward, don't drive distracted. Welcome back to First Responder TV. It's time for Scam Alert. This segment alerts the public on scams that have been reported to local police departments.
A brushing scam is when a person receives a package containing unsolicited merchandise which was not ordered or requested. The package is usually addressed to you or a family member with no return address. The sender of the items is usually an international, third-party seller who's obtained the recipient's address online. They give the impression that you're a verified buyer, and if you write positive reviews for the merchandise, you get to keep it for free. These fake reviews help to fraudulently boost the product's ratings and sales numbers, which scammers hope results in an increase in actual sales. While it may appear to be a victimless crime, the reality is that your personal information may be compromised. Scammers often illegally obtain personal or account information and use it for many illicit activities. If you receive unsolicited merchandise, do not be swindled into paying for it. If you opened it and do not wish to keep it, simply throw it in the garbage. If you like it, you may keep it. By law, you may keep unsolicited merchandise and are under no obligation to pay for it. Change your account passwords as your personal information may have been compromised. Closely monitor your credit reports and credit card bills. If unsolicited merchandise arrives from Amazon, eBay, or another third-party seller, go to that company's website and file a fraud report. If you get a message on Facebook that says, look who died, don't click the link. It's a Facebook phishing scam that aims to steal your login credentials or install malware on your device. A friend sends you a private message that says, look who died, along with a link to a news article. When you click it, it asks you to enter your username and password in what appears to be a Facebook login page. This is the trap. As soon as you enter your information, it's sent straight to the scammer. The scammer then takes over the victim's account, locking them out, and sends the same message to your friends list. Scammers then have access to all your personal data, including email addresses, phone numbers, birth date, and more potential victims. The stolen data can be used to break into non-Facebook accounts or sold on the dark web. Users should not click on any link that looks unusual or suspicious, even if it comes from someone they know. If you've fallen victim to a phishing scam, change your password immediately to avoid being locked out of the account. Once that's done, report the message to Facebook. Check your security settings and log out of any devices or locations you don't recognize. Make sure that no unfamiliar email addresses have been added to your account. Finally, turn on two-factor authentication and scan your computer or device with antivirus software. The Wright County Sheriff's Office is warning residents about phone scams impersonating law enforcement and using the threat of arrest warrants to fraudulently obtain money from innocent victims. The scam caller tells the person there's a warrant for their arrest. The reason for the warrant could be a traffic violation, missed jury duty, failure to pay income tax to the IRS, or some other minor infraction. The scammer then tells the potential victim they need to surrender themselves to the sheriff's office for arrest, or they may pay a reduced payment of the fine to settle the warrant. The scammer provides instructions on how the payment should be submitted, usually through a gift card or other similar payment method. They've been known to manipulate caller ID to make the number appear to come from local law enforcement. Although the Wright County Sheriff's Office will sometimes make calls during an investigation, they will never ask for payment over the phone or offer to negotiate a reduced payment to avoid arrest. Anyone who has been a victim of this scam or who receives such a call should try to take down as much information as possible. Then, immediately contact the Wright County Sheriff's Office at 763-682-1162. Love is a lesson that doesn't end. It knows no conditions, so you better buckle in. Love keeps you on your toes. It never stops, only grows. Love isn't easy, it's a commitment, especially when they're being their most resistant. Love is finding the right seat so you can take a breath. But remember, love isn't lax. It always double checks. Check that your kids are in the right seat at nitsa.gov slash the right seat. Coming up, here's a First Responder TV segment from The Vault. Next on Safety Source, the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office Water Patrol will give us some snowmobile safety tips for when you're out on the lake. You know, right now with the ice conditions the way they are, we really have no snow cover. And so to, to be driving out here, we always tell people to check with either an ice auger, drill a hole, or take an ice chisel and check the ice thickness. 
the DNR recommendations for ice is four inches for a person, five to seven for a snowmobile or ATV, 10 to 12 for a small vehicle, light truck, and then full size pickup, 12 to 15. It all looks the same. And you know, it could be 12 inches here and it could be nine inches, 100 yards over that way, or even 50 feet, you can have an inch or two discrepancy. The clear hard ice that forms initially is the strongest, safest ice. And then with the snow melt and you get, you know, deterioration and melting and things like that, that ice generally isn't as strong. Also, there's, there's conditions that are always something to be concerned about, and that's moving water. And we have that in channels, creeks, rivers. So we recommend you stay out of the channels all, all year long. Whether you're on the ice or a trail, a good thing is to always be with a partner. And then also let somebody at home know that you're gonna be out snowmobiling and you plan to go you know, from this point to this point and you plan on being home return time of this. You can outdrive your, your headlights, so your speeds are gonna be greater than what you can actually see. Those fish houses, those vehicles, those people fishing can appear awful quickly if you're, if you're going fast. It's the same thing in the daytime. Your visibility is only so far, and if you're going at a high rate of speed, you may not see that pressure ridge or ice even in the, in the ice or open water. The other thing too, if you look at my snowmobile, on the back we have studs, and that does give you quite a bit of traction control on, on conditions like this. The direction you came in is the direction you want to go out. You know that the, the ice was safe five, 10 feet back from where you went in. Kick with your feet, and if you have ice picks, do this, and use this to kind of pull yourself out. Otherwise, you can roll too. The other thing that we recommend is that you wear a life jacket when you're out on the ice, even in the winter time. Don't drink and drive. It's the same on the, on the snowmobiles as on the road. It impairs your thinking and, and your reaction times. Speed too. If you keep your speed down, you're gonna see those ice houses. You're gonna see the people fishing out there. You're gonna see those holes in the water and any discrepancies on the lakes or trails. Thank you for watching First Responder TV, your local public safety source. If you have an idea for a segment or an upcoming fire prevention or life safety event, please let us know. This is Kelly Murphy-Renge giving you information you can use, share, and to live by. See you next time.